five times more tests than the U.S. per capita. Why is that? I don't think that's true. That, that is true. You I don't, I don't think it's true. White House, I, the U.S. passes South Korea. I don't think it's true. Testing. Who are you with? Uh, Yahoo News. It's not true for capital. Oh, look, another left-wing agitator who's more interested in making themselves the story than in doing their professional job. Also, I'm pretty sure that was a statement, not a question. Mr. President, overall, South Korea has done five times more tests than the U.S. per I don't think that's true. That, that is true. Yeah, that was a statement. And not just any statement, but a factually incorrect statement. Did you notice that he used per capita data in his attempt to score political points against Trump? That's a tactic the media has been using a lot lately. Sometimes they use raw numbers, other times they use the per capita data. It just depends whichever will work best as a weapon against Trump. For example, those death counts that roll 24 seven on all the networks, those are all raw numbers. If they were to use the per capita data, the death counts would look a lot lower compared to other countries. Hence, they use the raw numbers because it's a more effective weapon against Trump. In this case, he uses per capita data in an attempt to make Trump look bad, but it turns out he's just plain wrong about the data. We'll get right back into this episode, but first let me quickly tell you about this free special offer for my subscribers. What will your savings in retirement look like once we've declared victory over the virus? Many Americans use this little known IRS qualified loophole that allows Americans to buy gold and silver with their retirement accounts. Call today and request a free investment kit below. Mention Drone Tech Politics and get a free one ounce silver coin for qualified retirement account holders. Must must be over 40 to qualify. Call 866-915-5053 and get your free investment guide today. That is true. I don't, I don't right think here. it's true. The White House I, the US passes South Korea I don't think it's true. Testing. Who are you with? Uh, Yahoo News. It's not true for capital. Uh, do you want to respond to that? Do you, if you have the numbers. The numbers. So remember early on, we push tests to the outbreak areas, just like he described. His primary outbreak was in Miami-Dade and Broward County and Palm Beach, so they pushed test into that region. We did the same thing in the United States, so if you look at every single state that had an outbreak, their testing is greater than anywhere in the world. The point is than taken about um, individual areas, but overall we've had 14 times more infections than South Korea. So are we doing something wrong and why is that? They have a very dense population. Yeah, our epidemic looks much more like the European epidemic. So right now we're tracking very close to the countries in Europe and we're testing at their rate of, of their concentrated epidemics and where they're occurring in the metros. I think it really shows the susceptibility of our major cities in the same way they were susceptible in Europe. For one, this comparison to South Korea is dishonest and has been dismissed by none other than Dr. Fauci, a man who they revere and idolize as long as he's saying what they want to hear. If he doesn't, they literally just ignore him and carry on like they never heard it. Sanjay Gupta said that's this is all because we got started too late in the US. Is that right? Do you agree? You know, it isn't as simple as that, uh, Jake. I'm sorry. I mean, uh, to just say this is all happening because we got started too late. Obviously, if you look, could you have done something a little bit earlier? It would have had an impact, obviously. But where we are right now is the result of a number of factors. The size of the country, the heterogeneity of the country. It's, I think it's a little bit unfair to compare us to South Korea. During that interview, Dr. Fauci also smacks down any attempt to claim that if Trump had done some nebulous action earlier, that it would have saved lives due to the many factors at play. But does the media or the Democrat party care? Of course not. And they levy that claim against Trump anyway. Even going as far as to claim that US intelligence warned Trump about this virus outbreak in January and he ignored them. A conspiracy theory that's been denied over and over again by the acting head of the nation's intelligence community, Richard Garnell, who tweeted out, this isn't true. And we told you this before you wrote it. And you put the DNI's denial of your premise in paragraph nine. Vanity Fair is now repeating the false Washington Post narrative. As we said multiple times, this story is not true. Just a few weeks ago, the DNI had to issue an extremely rare statement denying reports from the DNC media, making similar claims about these early warnings. Huh, that's strange. That reminds me of the narrative against George W. Bush after 9-11 and after every natural disaster. So you have to compare each state per capita to South Korea if if you're gonna dishonestly make that comparison. But even so, the data that he's presenting doesn't jive with the facts. A few minutes later, Dr. Briggs jumped back into the fray to educate this leftist mouthpiece from Yahoo. So to our Yahoo gentlemen, I just wanna make it clear that um, South Korea's testing was 11 per, 
per 100,000 and we're at 17 per 100,000. Right. So are you going to apologize, Yahoo? That's why you're Yahoo and nobody knows who the hell you are. Go ahead. Let's go, Jeff. Go ahead. That's why nobody knows who you are, including me. Go ahead. Just check it again. You ought to get your facts right before you make a statement like that. Okay, well, your facts are wrong. It appears that Dr. Bricks meant to say per 1,000, not 100,000. Because checking our world in data put together by Oxford University, it shows it per 1,000. And their data backs up what Dr. Bricks said. 16.9 tested per 1,000 in the US and 11.73 per 1,000 in South Korea as of April 27th. And this is why we call them the drive-by media. Because believe me, there will be no retraction or correction. As of right now, his Twitter page doesn't have any corrections or apologies, but he is whining that a lot of people are accusing him of being a DNC operative. That's all I have for today, folks. Please like, share, and subscribe. Also, tonight at 7 p.m., our friend SJG Perspective will be interviewing Dan Glovok. So make sure to go over there and check that out as well. If you want to support this channel, you can do so on one of these platforms. You can find all the links in the description and pinned comment. Thanks for watching. Keep coming back.